What's up everyone, Michael Young here from R3 Joe 5 Labs back again with the second part of the Apple WWDC 2012 roundup and this is the iOS 6 version whereby Apple releases a whole new operating system. Well, I wouldn't call it whole new because most of the interface stays the same but however, Apple has put some pretty nice touches on it and we're gonna get to, into detail. So I do apologize if this is gonna be a little long, but bear with me, it is a fun one. So the developer beta for iOS 6 is gonna be available today with the software coming to consumers this fall. It'll be available for the iPhone 3GS, surprisingly, second and third generation iPad or new iPad, whichever you'd like to call it, and finally the fourth generation iPod Touch. However, we can see that Apple will exclude some of the hottest features from older devices for example the ipad 2 or the iphone 3gs siri has been updated with ipad compatibility however this is only compatible with the third generation ipad so the second generation ipad will not be getting siri siri can now launch apps to update your facebook posts sort restaurants by ratings and single out the best movie from the trashy ones and trust me there are a lot of trashy movies these days coming from hollywood with rotten tomatoes integration nice to see there chinese and korean uh support has also been added into ios 6 for siri and now let's talk about facebook because in the d10 all things d10 summer uh conference tim cook basically mentioned that Apple is gonna do lots and lots of stuff in the future with Facebook and this is just gonna be one of the major ones that we see Apple is to is integrating right now so Facebook will now be baked into the core of iOS you can post status updates from notification center and Facebook will sync your contacts with your friends list I'm anticipating this to be a complete mess and disaster just like how Android has been in the past but uh, we'll have to see how it goes first you can also have your Facebook friends birthdays sync with your iOS calendar on the phone app front, we see two new and frankly very beneficial features. The first will be text messages from the screen. You, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. First will be t text replies from the call screen so that you can immediately text back a pre-written message if you're busy or for some reason can take a call. This is incredibly beneficial for me and I thank Apple for just including it in this update. Uh, the second one will be much more newer to the whole market thing to the industry and that is do not disturb mode which is much like Skype's DND if you have ever well you Skyped it allows you to completely turn off notifications updates phone calls text messages and the like you have a choice to you have the choice to whitelist certain people and if someone calls you twice within that set period of time when you want to go on do not disturb the second phone call will usually come through moving down we can now facetime and 3g over we can now facetime i mean we can now facetime over 3g and cellular this should by right make facetime much more painless and facile to use the carriers might not like it though because of the huge uh, weight it puts on their uh, servers or broadband, whichever. Apple IDs and phone numbers will now be unified so that if someone calls you on FaceTime, you'll be able to enter it from both your Mac and your iPad. Apple also introduced iCloud tabs which is basically a copy of Instapaper and Chrome Sync. So nothing new there. Select people will now also get notification the moment you post a photo on live stream There your friends would be able to see this in a from there your friends will be able to see the new pictures On a separate album and share them respectively. This is much like Facebook if you get where I'm going here right now On the mail on the mail app front which is default in iOS 6 and all the iOS basically we get 
will be getting VIPs whereby certain contacts will be entitled to their own special notification. Videos and messages can now be inserted into messages. Pull to refresh is now also available in iOS 6 for mail. And this is a surprisingly long over... <coughs> My apology. This is a surprisingly overdue feature that drew a huge cheer from the crowd. Next, we have got Passbook, Apple's homegrown app, which I'm anticipating to be only available in the US for a certain period of time. It is a new app that follows all your passes, airplanes, movies, shopping, anything with a barcode into a single app, and that is definitely a great feature to see. Next, for the disabled or handicapped, we see guided access, which is now a key feature in iOS. And that is definitely nice to see. Here, you can disable some of the software and hardware buttons that you don't want the disabled user punching. I see that it, I think that it is great that Apple is taking the disadvantaged people into consideration and providing them with support, which is far more superior than the one supported with Android. Next, we'll see Google Maps getting kicked out of iPhone, of iOS, the entire ecosystem. Google is kicked out and, it is, and Apple is now replacing it with its own home-built software. With the ability to work directly from the home screen, Map has more than 100 business listings from Yelp. Live traffic reports, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, although it looks slightly different from TomTom's. It, the interface when uh, they were showing it in the slide looks completely different and I am excited to try it out. Siri is also integrated into the new map and allows you to ask natural questions such as are we here yet and Siri will reply no or yes 15 minutes later, whatever. Next, in integrated into Maps is also Flyover, which is a spectacular feature for Maps. Apple basically mapped and modeled every city in the world into a, tre into a 3D uh, graphic with an insane amount of detail. And this is by far better than Google Earth. You have to really see to believe it. It is amazing. Everything about the Maps is impressive. Let's talk about Lost Mode, which is incorporated into uh, Find My iPhone service. Allows the owner of the lost phone to send a phone number to the phone. And if by chance the person happens to be a good one, the person who finds the phone happens to be a good one, he can call the owner in just a single tap. Honestly, I think this is a pretty much redundant and useless feature because you can now very well send a message to your lost iPhone with your phone number if you want. Well, if you want it back. So what's really the point of this feature? And one last thing. New, no new iPhone was announced, disappointingly. So they announced a new OS, but not a new iPhone. I was really, really hoping that Apple would announce a new iPhone since the iPhone 4S, even though it's beautiful, even though it's great, it's really starting to show its age. I mean, compared to the HTC One X, compared to the Samsung Galaxy X3, the iPhone 4S just falls behind. So that has been a wrap up for iOS 6 from Apple's WWDC Developer Conference 2012. I'm Michael Young, your host from our 305 Labs. And this is part two of three of the roundup. I'll catch you guys again in the third episode of this Rana, whereby I'll be summarizing all the features for Mountain Lion, OS X basically. So I'll catch you guys again soon.